So um, with that, what is what is Svelte? Well, I just happen to have brought a little bit of information about that today, <laughs> ironically. How convenient. <laughs> yes. So let's kind of just walk through some basic stuff here. I, I talk about what it's felt to folks a lot. And one of the best ways to talk about it is it's the easy on-ramp into web programming. If you really want dynamic applications, Svelte is a great way to go. Uh, and we're going to really give everything that people need to get started right out of the gate. Uh, so kind of going from there, my fingers will work. The big <laughs> differentiators, I like to break things into three, the rule of three. Um, everybody wants to write less code. Well, maybe not everybody, but the less code you write, the less mistakes you can make, the less bugs you can have, the less maintenance that you've got, the less refactoring, and frankly, the easier it is to get going, right? Svelte's all about that. Uh, we hear about the virtual DOM all the time with, with things like with React and whatnot, and that's great, but uh, Svelte doesn't uh, deal with the virtual DOM. So we're going to take a look at what it does. What is a virtual DOM? Just real quick there. Uh, it is. It's a good question. So the DOM itself is a document object model. Every browser has a DOM. Uh, and years ago, a little bit of history for folks, the DOMs in the browsers were different in each version of each browser and in each browser which meant as a web programmer who no longer has hair, there was one point in my life, I was actually coding with a lot of if-then statements in JavaScript for every version of every browser, and it was not fun. Um, the <laughs> virtual DOM case. is effectively a DOM that sits side by side with the DOM, and you can kind of manipulate what's going on with it and then kind of insert it into the DOM itself. It's a way to make updates and get rid of Flickr and refresh and make the browser go faster. Okay, and Svelte doesn't do that. No, it does not do that. And that was a, it's a very, it's not a bad thing. It's that it, uh, it, that to use a virtual DOM, it's just that it doesn't need to do that with what it's doing. Okay. Uh, and it's got this concept called reactivity out of the box. And reactivity is a funny word because it makes you think, well, it's React, you know, <laughs> the React framework, uh, or maybe it's Rx, you know, people talk about uh, reactive extensions for .NET or JavaScript. No, reactivity is effectively just this, put very simply. Chris, if I slap you across the face, which I can't do here, let's emulate it here. Ready? Um, <laughs> go. Boom. The reactivity was Chris moving. <laughs> Christopher moving. <laughs> yes, Christopher. Excuse me. So when Christopher got hit, there was a reaction and it caused him to move in a different direction. Uh, and this is, think about this with the web applications. With web applications, when something changes in the web app, you want that to react to the changes and then show the different data. Great example is you go get a list of customers in your code, you put it into React, or sorry, Svelte, and you want Svelte to react to those changes and then show them on the screen. Reactivity just works out of the box. We don't have to worry about updating or refreshing or repainting, for example. Does that make sense or did I totally gobble that? No, that, 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 makes, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Cool. And I apologize for messing your name up, Christopher. That's all right. <laughs> you can call me Jonifer if you'd like to now. So. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I mean, in a nutshell, Silt is just a web framework. Uh, and I say web framework specifically because it's not a JavaScript framework. It's a web framework. We got to treat JavaScript, HTML, and CSS all on equal footing here. So it's a web framework that manages the web. It compiles your app into mostly what we call vanilla JavaScript or HTML and CSS. And we say vanilla because that's just a... Uh, it's a conventional way of saying that there's nothing special about the JavaScript, HTML, or CSS. It's plain old JavaScript, HTML, CSS with no special Svelte stuff in it. I think you'll see what I mean when we get to the code in a moment. Okay. So the first thing to look at is what is Svelte? Uh, probably the weirdest part about Svelte, and Vue has this too, is the name of the file. The name of the file has an extension .svelte. And the editors are smart enough to know that this is a Svelte file. And you'll see why this is important when we get to the code. So let's say we're creating a hero. I like doing things like heroes and villains as my examples. And let's say we're putting a hero together. Well, we want to give the hero a name. So we have script code. We create a script tag. It's just regular HTML here. And we create a variable called hero. And we set it to my son's name, Landon, because why not? Anything questions journey. so far? How, how, how's that looking? Yeah, no, that looks good. That looks good. So we start here, and we end up getting basically just the script is our code. Well, remember, we have JavaScript, HTML, and CSS make up 
the web. So there's our JavaScript, right? Mm -hmm. Next, we've got our HTML. What are we gonna display? Now, everything in here looks very normal, except probably the hero with the squiggly braces around it, the brackets. And as you might have guessed, the hero is the variable that's up in the code. So this is, uh, people call this a lot of different things, interpolation or you know, variable switching or the reactivity of Svelte. What's happening here is when it sees that the word hero is changed to Landon, it's gonna find every place in the HTML where it's referred to as hero in those squiggly brackets and it's gonna replace it. That's the reactivity okay. and there's nothing you have to do to make that work, it just does. And you know, one thing I notice um, uh, that's that's I think different from uh, a lot of the other frameworks is there was nothing special about that variable that you declared. That it's just simply let uh, hero equal Landon, and that's it. Like you didn't have to um, you know mark that as anything stateful or anything special. That, that's exactly right. The best part about Svelte is what you're not seeing. You're not seeing anything special. There is no like. Um, Svelte model attribute or any kind of uh, decorators and TypeScript, um, other popular things that you see in, in other web frameworks, which are fine. I mean, I use those things in other mm -hmm. frameworks. But the nice thing about Svelte is you don't have to learn. The conceptual count is very small. Yeah. I mean, if you know a little bit of HTML, a little bit of JavaScript, and please learn a little CSS as well, right? <laughs> well, to display it, <laughs> There you go. Those three things together can go in one file in Svelte. And some people might say, well, how can you put it all in one file? Well, I'll get a little bit of architectural soapbox here. I like small components. The smaller the component, the easier it is to debug, to maintain, to reuse everything. I could not agree more. It's also just more reusable at that point as well. Yeah. Yeah. And here's the gratuitous link tree that we yeah. can give to people. So, uh, but I'll get off that. We can go look at a real application if you'd like to. Um, actually, go back to real quick to that last slide with mm -hmm. with the code on it, just because there's one last little thing I want to highlight mm -hmm. is like if if you handed this like like you said, you know, um, have somebody just learn a little bit of of JavaScript, HTML, CSS. If I handed this to somebody who that was all that they knew, like they just knew a little bit of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, like it wouldn't feel that weird to them. It it wouldn't look all that strange that about the only thing that would sort of jump out is that there's a style tag, which honestly there probably should have been in the original spec of HTML anyway, and those those little curly braces. But otherwise, I mean like all of that just looks normal. Yeah. And you know, we normally put our style tags in our HTML with a link to a file, right? Right. And you can still do that. I mean that's you can still do those kind of things. Um, what's happening here without getting too far into the like next level of where Svelte is, is those styles are scoped to the hero component. And that's how we refer to the hero.svelte file. There's a hero component that shows the hero's name. That's what this does. And we want those styles to only apply to the code on this particular page. So that's why those styles are here. If you don't have that requirement, like if you have a global style sheet that covers your entire website, you could eliminate that code and and then your component is literally six lines of code. 